Welcome to another program for Radical for the Truth. Um, Pastor Roscoe Heath with New Praise Ministries and my associate, Pastor Jeffrey Jackson with Way of Life Ministries. And Pastor, today I would like to talk about the election that is uh, actually is underway right now and most of our voting is going to be done this Tuesday, Sunday and so I thought that today would be a good time to uh, reach the people on this issue of uh, how we're voting, who we're voting for, if we're voting, what it all means and all of that. And so, how it affect us. And definitely how it will affect us. Yes. And uh, you know we're having a lot of uh, a lot of fighting between the two candidates, a lot of uh, slinging mud I know they I know that the Republicans are are they pulled out the Abraham Lincoln was a Republican card <laughs> and he freed the slaves. I'm not gonna lie to you when I saw that. I almost I almost wrecked my car when I saw the billboard that said that, that intimated that we should vote for uh, Ab- uh, you know Romney because Abraham Lincoln was a Republican and he's he freed the slaves. But anyway, so we have all of those amusing ideas. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so what are your thoughts? Where are we here? Well, let me just say this. This is a very hot topic, uh, very uh, uh, personal and very uh, uh, spiritual, actually. And one of the things that I want to begin to say is that we have to come to a a point of understanding is that we have to realize who we're voting for and what we're voting for. Mm -hmm. We can't vote uh, because of a a Republican Party or Democratic. We can't because that's not going to change the world. Uh, We can't vote for who's white, who's black. and, And, you know, we have to vote for the issues. We have to vote for where uh, these people say that they're willing to take us. But one thing for sure, what I realized is that I, I find that even in the debates that you look at these uh, presidential candidates, they they come to the point of telling you all these different things. And then when it comes down to asking the real questions, they dance around it. They never give you a clear statement on where they want to take the people, mm-hmm. how we're going to get there. And that's a very dangerous place because people vote for uh, a certain particular person and don't know truly what's in that person's heart. Mm -hmm. And this is why I say it's a spiritual matter because we have to come to a point of understanding. The Bible says that we should not just look at the outward appearance of a man, but we should look at a man's heart. And we need to search the hearts of these candidates that we're putting in office and realize that they're not really living up to what they say that they're going to do for us and do for the people. Let me, let me, you know, I got a passage here that kind of uh, reflects what you were talking about in terms of when when God, uh, what what God says we should look for in a a leader. Uh, This is, this this is in the book of Exodus, the 18th chapter. Hmm. This is when Moses... Men of truth. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're with me. Uh, in, in Exodus chapter 18, uh, verse 21, Jethro, a Midianite, um, was giving his son-in-law, Moses, mm-hmm. uh, direction on what he should do in terms of leading these, like, two and a half million people. You know, he came to him and he says, you, you, you do, you're trying to do too much. You're going to wear yourself out, so you need um, people to help you. In other words, you need a government. Yes. And this is what he says in the 18th verse. It says, moreover, you shall select from all the people, watch this, able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens, and let them judge the people at all times. Amen. Yeah. And so, when we look at this able now, men. able men, and fear God, and that fear God, this is the thing that we never see when we talk about, you know, I know that people want to say, well, we need to divide, you know, the uh, church and state, and, you know, uh, the government, and so forth, mm-hmm. but the truth of the matter is, is that this is not just a, a, a physical physical matter, it's a spiritual matter because your soul depends on where this country is going and where the leader who says he's going to lead you, where he's going to take you and the standards that, that you have to follow according to God's principles. Okay, that's all good, but people, listen, we got we got Mitt Romney okay. and Barack Obama. All people right. want to know who to vote for. Now, I have a I know a bunch of pastors, as you do, all of us, we know all of these pastors. I know a group of pastors, a group of them has said, I'm not voting for anyone. Okay. Okay. What are your thoughts about that? When I look at this, uh, now we all have a right. We all have a choice to whether we want to vote or not. But do we have a responsibility to vote? We have a responsibility to make sure that whoever we put in office is going to be for the people. And government right now is not for the people. 
No, so, what do you mean so, by that? So the, that means is that the government is, is all about their agenda. We look at the arguments that they make uh, against each other, but yet the truth of the matter is behind closed doors, they're best friends. They talk all these kind of crazy things against each other, they, like Hillary Clinton, for, for instance. we got to bring this out because it's the truth. Now, how do two people claim that they're on uh, uh, two different agendas and one, you know, she, she just totally just... just uh, defamed this man as if he's nobody. Yeah, he's when, the, when she was trying to win, her. Right, right, right. When she was trying to win, <laughs> and all of a sudden, when she had no chances to win, mm-hmm. now all of a sudden they're best friends. She's working right up under him. Yeah. She's the uh, Secretary of State. Mm-hmm. Going, you know. And matter of fact, it's amazing because now he's not even holding her accountable for what she claimed is her mistake. But see, this administration <laughs> and any other administration that we've been looking at lately has been lies. You know, they they they're backdooring everybody and they're lying and they're not holding up the truth for what they say they're going to do. So now, when we talk about responsibility, we have a responsibility not to become partakers of wickedness and evilness because the Bible says is that when we support this, and who we support and how they uh, are, are killing off people and so forth, whatever, there's so much there's, that needs to be said. But in just a short answer, we have a responsibility to the Lord, to the, His biblical commandments. We have a responsibility to love one another, to uh, a responsibility to make sure that we're providing for each other even when the government won't do it. Okay, I understand that. But here's the thing. We're going to have a president. One of these guys is going to be the president. Absolutely. Okay, whether you vote or not. Absolutely. One of these men is going to be the president. Okay. okay. Do I have a responsibility to in- influence that decision? Now, let me just say this to you. you don't, I don't care how you vote right now. You particularly, or me, myself, mm-hmm. the electoral votes is what matter. And that's the people that. with, with, with money, the haves. We're the have not. We really don't have a whole lot to say. No way. It's it's what it's what the people who are who are above us who have more to say or a voice in in this matter. Those are the ones that's really accounting. Uh, uh, those are the ones that's really putting a president in you know uh, in position. But here's the truth of the matter. It don't matter who's the, who the president is. It, it could be a president that's purple. The truth of the matter is, is that this government is not ran through the presidency. It's ran through big banks. It's ran through, you know, what we call the, the Illuminati, the New World Order. And nobody wants to touch that issue. Well, that's because not, not many people believe it. Sometimes it's fantasy. But look, you're still not, you're still not giving us what we need to know. There are going to be millions of people that go out Tuesday. Okay, that's true. To vote. Okay? They have one man who says he's for the people, for mm-hmm. the common people. There's another man who says, well, you know, 60% of America is just lazy. No, okay. 47%. I mean, <laughs> okay. Yeah, 47%. <laughs> All right? Just lazy and trying to take advantage. Who, how do I make a decision on who to vote? Clearly, I can't use Exodus 18 and 21 because, because neither of these candidates fall into that category. Not truth, nor fear God. Uh, clearly. Clearly. Okay. Oh, wait a minute, but uh, Mormon uh, Romney was a Mormon bishop. Okay, uh, but what do they believe about Jesus? Well, He's okay. God. Okay, all right, so, okay, good point. All right, so so, the, so now here's the answer, Neil. How do I vote? You pray to your Lord. You <laughs> pray to your Lord and personal Savior, and if you don't have a relationship with him, you need to get one so that he can give you discernment on how to go about a matter and how to make sure that in the decisions that you do make, you... This is the leader that you're asking for. So when you go to that that polling booth and you go into there by yourself, this is the conscious decision that you have to live up with. So whatever man you vote for and whatever he does in this community, whatever he does in this uh, country, it's, it's, it's what you chose as a voter. It's what you chose to say, hey, this is the person who I trust and this is the person who I believe that's going to lead us to where we need to go. Another point, that I, that's a very good point, and I think we need to do everything by prayer. Um, another point that I want to bring up is is the uh, propaganda that that each throw at each other. And I'm not trying to sound like um, I have a democratic bend, but I've been thinking about this. uh, The the one issue, this one huge platform that they're running on is this abortion issue. Okay. Okay. And uh, Obama's 
record on abortion is abysmal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from his position on it. And uh, Romney is trying to play to that, uh, to evangelical Christians. Okay. Um, I did some, uh, um, some statistic finding on uh, how many uh, presidents, Republican presidents we've had since 1973, uh, Roe versus Wade, when abortion was made legal. Do you know that um, during Ronald Reagan's pre presidency and the first George Bush's presidency, who are both Republicans, mm -hmm. who claimed that they were anti-abortion, abortion in America was at its highest. Okay. Okay. No president has done anything to decrease abortion in his presidency. No, no Republican presidency. And I got something else that's shocking too that you might find shocking. Okay. That during uh, so far during o uh, President Obama's uh, administration, abortion is at its lowest that has ever been since it's been uh, uh, legalized. You saying that? I'm not saying that. The statistics are saying that since Obama has been president, abortions have been at its lowest. I don't agree with that. You don't? No. Why? I don't agree with that. Why? Because the truth of the matter is, is that you don't like that statistic. That's what you're saying. But yes. You very much. It so. doesn't fit into your paradigm of what you believe about Obama. N well, I like this. Now like you you're just, on the ropes now, don't I? No, not really. Okay, because that's a it's statistical not just fact. A, well, oh, oh, from I, the CDC, it's a statistical fact from the CDC. And you telling me that? No, the CDC is telling you this. Okay, so they're saying is that keep under his administration, yes, that abortion is is lower than has ever been. Since 1973, Roe versus Wade, and let me see. And you know, and there's some reasons for that. I think I'm not. I don't think it's because of anything that has to do with Obama's moral position. I think there's a lot of variables that uh, that come into play when women start thinking about abortion. First of all, education. Okay. Uh, and your more economically declined uh, areas of of life, you know, where people don't uh, live real well, your abortion is higher. And that has a lot to do with education and economics and all of those things, okay? People make strange moral decisions when uh, they're hungry. Okay. That, okay. That's true. All right. And one thing that I've been finding is that people who have had abortions when they were 20, okay, when they're 40, they think that it's a sin. <laughs> Okay. It wasn't a sin. It wasn't a sin when they were in that situation. They had to make a decision. But then they turned 40 and 50 and they said, oh, no, okay, this is, there's something terribly wrong with this. And so that's another variable. But I, I believe that a lot of economics, and let me tell you something. Okay, we, we'll, we'll, the, the evangelicals and the right-wing evangelicals will make these uh, terrible cries against abortion, and yet there's hundreds of thousands of black people being killed in other countries every single day. Every day. Okay, that is supported by that that is supported by the economics of an administration, right? <laughs> That, that that we put in place. Okay, so, so think about that. Okay, if they're concerned about life, how come they're not concerned about all life? You, I, good question. <laughs> so I, you know what? If you, if the numbers is down, that like you say they are. No, it's not like I say. It's like the CDC. Okay, say. like like the CDC <laughs> say. If it's really down like that, I wonder why. When 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 you when you are promoting. Same-sex relationships and same-sex marriage. So uh, two men can't get each other pregnant. So I guess it would be going down because ain't too many people getting pregnant, huh? Yeah. Well, you have a good point there. That's a very you know, good point. So uh, I mean, <laughs> but but Obama is not making people not making. Well, he didn't create homosexuality. Well, he supported. It. Well, <laughs> okay, but he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't make it happen, though. Well, 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 when you look at it, either way it go. This is what I'm saying. Okay, the well, one group is throwing out a red hair. Okay. okay. Obama's position on homosexuality, I couldn't care less about that, considering the fact that I want him to do something about the economy. Okay. okay. And I'm going to tell you something. All the presidents should do something about it. And the Bible talks about oppressing the poor mm -hmm. more than it talks about homosexuality. Absolutely. Okay. And so the oppression of the poor and the support of the rich and the rich getting richer at the oppression and at the expense of the poor is an abomination that's talked about in the Bible over and over again. Okay. So so now here's something. Let's get away from the uh, so we need same to 
look at the big Mary. picture there. That's, that's what I'm saying. We need to look at the big picture and let and stop letting people who use verbal rhetoric to try to influence how we vote. We need to look at the whole picture. Look at the whole picture. See, that's my whole point. We need to finally look at the whole picture. Yeah. The agenda is where we're going. Now, he can't do nothing about the economy because they want the economy to fail in the first place. <laughs> we must understand is that if you keep spending money that you don't have, you keep going further and further in debt. So it don't matter which president is going to get voted in, his agenda is still going to uh, uh, take us to a point where we go to the new world order where the American dollar will fail. Yes. I guarantee you. Listen, if, if you don't believe it, you don't trust it right now, that's fine. <coughs> you wait just one more to two more years, I guarantee you're going to see a significant drop in the American dollar. It already lost its value already. But just watch the importance of what's going to take place. And then you'll come back and you'll look at this show and you'll say, you know what? Those guys that were speaking truth, I should have listened to them. I should have followed them. I should have put my hope and my trust in Jesus Christ so that I wouldn't have to depend on some man. Amen. Our time is up, brother. Let's get back to Jesus Christ. Folks, don't put your hope in the government that's failing and in man. We must put our hope and our faith in Christ. We'll be praying for you. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.